So to continue our conversation on frame buffers, when I was trying to outline before, and I kind of maybe didn't, or didn't sort of really, I didn't sort of really bring to sort of focus the point of everything I was trying to make. Okay, so we have our frame buffer, which is our screen, right? That's that's the final, that's what's going to be finally outputted to our to what we're seeing, right? In 2D, which is pretty much a contiguous memory allocation. Then we have our display frame buffer, which is in this case just a loop. Of course, in in real real world reality, it's going to be obviously, you know, a far more complicated thing than just simply a loop that just displays the pixels. You know, it's obviously it's a hardware tool, it's a hardware device which does that. But nevertheless, the principle is the same. It gets put out. It doesn't matter how it gets put. Here, I'm using a software renderer, obviously, and doing software uh, graphical rendering here. But the principle is the same. But and the rasterizer is pretty much the algorithms that actually decide which of those frame buffers, fr frame buffer pixels are going to get lit up as I've shown here. So obviously, you know, we know by mathematical you know, rules and uh, methods that, you know, if we want to draw a square, we have to draw four down, four across for a square that's of size four, four, and obviously we know the area and all that kind of stuff. And we can use that information to actually light up our frame buffer. It's going to make the frame buffer here bigger because we can. Let's make it 256. Give us a bit of a better view. Gosh, gone over again. Um, okay, nevertheless, ignore that. Give it 228. Now, what I wanted to also say is, you know, using algorithms. Remember, these algorithms are not causing this frame buffer to be printed out completely. It's you know, it's this is not what's, you know, the frame buffer needs to exist in the first place in order for the rasterizer to be able to draw to it, right? Now the rasterizer uses algorithms. Here I used, you know, pretty much a, a loop algorithm to draw, you know, but I could have used a far more mathematical algorithm. I could have actually said, you know, for, again, I could have used, I'm using a loop here, for, let's just say, integer x, y, z, right? Could have actually said, you know, set a bound. For example, I want to, I want to, want to go for a bound. For example, for some line, while well, z is less than in the y direction. I say, yeah, 64, 64, uh, z plus plus. Obviously, right? You know, I could have put an algorithm that says, you know, to draw a, to draw a diagonal line, right? Using the simple line equations. So I could have said frame buffer yeah. for uh, the z value uh, z value being of course not necessarily z in, in, a, in a conventional sense of uh, you know three three dimensional plane i'm just using z as an example here but let's just say z because this is obviously each height of each of our lines but now to actually determine which column or which you know which which row in that column it's going to be you know, here I, I'd actually say uh, uh, gradient times x, which is going to be our heat point plus b, right? And here, let's just say we use x. Or we can actually use z as well. We can use z here as well to find out exactly which, um, you know, which row it's going to be lighting up. And we can try it and see what happens. say uh, give it two which is going to be a very steep line for this very small small space and B was not the clear either oops I'm kind of rushing too much aren't I let's just say B equals zero actually in that case I don't even need B let's just say M times Z see anything here z equals zero uh, this is why it's not printing
I forgot to make it actually equal to one. Anyway, moving on. So here we're just using this algorithm to draw our line. And then we have this line that comes all the way across and gives us this effect. So in reality, as you can see, we've used an algorithm in the rasterizer to and a, a mathematical equation to actually um, you know, draw our lines on screen and give us the perception of you know, what's conceivable to us and what's understandable to us. You know, again, to the computer in the frame buffer, this means nothing. But in this situation here, to us, when we see this, we obviously understand that as being the line. We could have drawn another one. See, I've got them. So that's one algorithm here I'm using. I could use another one, which I'm going to go in reverse. Oh, actually, just do it this way. How far? Uh, 64 minus Z. 64 minus Z. And that's 64. Oh, wait, 128. Minus Z and minus m times z, m times z, this should give us the reverse effect. And again, we're updating the bits, we've, so we've made our calculations to find out the positions in our uh, frame buffer for the pixel, and then we've pretty much just put that pixel on, and here obviously this is displaying the frame buffer, it's just putting all the ones that are supposed to be put, uh, I'll make it red, out into the screen as it's supposed to be put out into the screen. I just have. Oh, jeez, what's going? It's going off here. Uh, 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 uh. Yep. So basically, I made a mistake with that Z. I shouldn't have been uh, minus from Z just for the uh, for the X function or the function that goes across. But anyway, so now what we're going to have, we should have a we should have a cross coming across the whole screen, which we do. So as you can see, we've actually. Um, We've actually drawn, you know, using the using the obviously you know an algorithm, which is a, in this case a, the line equation, right? You know, we're giving that to the rasterizer, and the rasterizer's worked out which exactly which of the frame buffer to light up and give us this effect. And because obviously due to the ratio aspect ratio of our screen, our know, frame buffer, you're not going to get precise. You know, results as you can see here, you know, it calculates it and then approximates it. So you're not going to get that last value because of obviously the limitations that we have, have which is obviously in this case 64 times 128, right? And that's what happens in OpenGL as well. You're going to get funny, funny lines. If you zoom in, in certain lines, they're going to look funny and rigid. And because, you know, in that pixel space, there isn't enough. Because as I said, we're dealing with discrete values. We haven't got infinite amount of space to actually get a perfect, precise. Uh, points in line, right? Maybe if it was a float number, you could have got a better number. But even in that case, again, the limitation of our thing of our screen here is going to stop us from giving the perfect, um, getting the perfect results. Let me just get rid of this for now. The rasterizer here, this rasterizer, um, because I want to actually you now use this information to actually draw a triangle right we're going to approximate a triangle onto our onto our onto our little frame buffer and screen so we have our um, you can see we have our screen we have our x that's been drawn using the line equation which is pretty much what is there. again open jewel does the same thing open jewel does the same thing with us when we when we give it something, it uses some some algorithm that it has in its rasterizer to, for example, draw lines. Probably, maybe something like this. You know, obviously there isn't any many other ways to do it. You know, drawing a line is pretty straightforward. But now, if we actually wanted to create a triangle, right? Now, what's a triangle? Triangle is, is you know, it's got is a is a a shape which has you know three edges and three vertices. Sorry about that. Horrible. Horrible um, line. Maybe I'll use this better. Yeah. It has three um, vertices, which has three edges. So what we do is we might give, for example, we can we can organize our program 
But then again, it's not about us making a program. It's how OpenGL deals with it. What OpenGL does is it gets free vertices, right? We give it free vertices, and then from those free vertices, it uh, first of all determines, um, you know, the points that are inside the triangle, and also the points that are on the edges, you know, using these algorithms, and then, you know, it determines uh, which of these points is actually, uh, you know, at the space you've actually, because after all, the points are, you know you do give a position for them. So if, if our screen is, for example, you know, this is our screen, right? And you've given a position to be there. And that's kind of what you're gonna, you're gonna get. You're gonna get the vertices within that screen at those three positions, right? It has to work out, you know, which, uh, which fragments or which um, pixels are gonna get lit up in our frame buffer, right? So it uses mathematical methods to work it out some ways it could possibly do this and then again we don't know the exact implementation because after all um, it all comes down to the different implementations by different vendors who make the actual graphics cards and drivers you know some ways of doing this which is you know according to mathematical models that we have and methods is one is to actually draw a circle around the sort of the closest circle to the edge edges of our uh, to the edges of our triangle, he has very rough approximation, and then within those, within that square, run across the pixels and check if the pixels are within its um, within the triangle, right? So the ones that are within the triangle, obviously you're going to be storing that information into the frame buffer, right? And then you're going to pretty much choose to light those those pixels in the frame. Buffer. Another way to do it is using very centric method, the coordinates, and what that does is works out again positions within triangles all it needs is three vertices right using the area of a uh, triangle it actually works out you know, what the coordinates are of a triangle another method is also there's an edge method there's a cross product method right this is the very centric method so what it is it gets the, approximates the areas over the whole um, triangle and then works out the coordinates based on that right I'm not going to get into the details of that right now because it's not even really important you don't have to know how this works right? all you have to know is that you know it just uses mathematical methods of working out points with the, on the edges and within the actual triangle itself right you know, in this case for example if you really want to just to cover it basically if you find out if you know three vertices you can find out what the uh, geocentric vertice is using the very centric method and once you have obviously um, this coordinate here, then you've obviously got now three, or even or you've divided this triangle into three triangles, which is what sort of weapon gel does. And it's commonly known for doing. And now, when you've got these three triangles, you can work out further more triangles, as you can see here. The coordinate here. So we've got. So not only do we have a new coordinate now here, but we can now be, make a new coordinate based on that one. And then, the, and then it just continues like that, you know. It pretty much, obviously, it happens so quickly because the computer is very good at making these kind of calculations. So now we've got coordinate here, coordinate here, coordinate here. Then if we had another position here, again, it works out the coordinate there. And again, breaks up out these triangles into more triangles. And then we have a coordinate here, coordinate here, coordinate here. Coordinate here, coordinate here, using the obviously the areas of these various um, uh, triangles and the vertices that surround it uh, here, etc. You know, basically, so it uses basically mathematical systems to find out the coordinates of our triangle that are within that triangle. But again, now now the values that this is going to get probably right. When it, you know, down to some certain level, right, is going to be maybe, you know, let's just say, for example, you know, these values might be all the way from, you know, starting, let's just say we started in, you know, with 1.0 for the external vertices. Um, you know, for the top one, for example. You know, for the middle one or the bottom left one, you know, uh, 
and we had another one here, which is obviously in, fr in 3D space. We could have also done it in 2D space. Right. Well, actually, this actually does get converted down to 2D space. So we can ignore those. Whatever that might be. That vertice right there. And basically, from that information, it gets that middle vertice coordinate and then from that it works at everything and then the range that you, you might get of, of uh, vertices within that triangle might be from obviously from whole numbers like 1.0 all the way down to 0 0.0000 you know four five six seven eight etc you know because obviously as it as it you know divides this triangle into smaller pieces you know to find out the coordinates within those triangles that it's you know using the other vertices to sort of interpolate across the whole triangle right as that happens, you know, the triangle of pieces get smaller and obviously the coordinates are going to get smaller as well. You know, that's how, that's how it... And obviously another thing to mention right there is obviously the, the, the coordinates that, for example, we get here, right, might, might, never, might be so small that in this frame buffer they'll have no position there. You know, it, they'll actually might not fit anywhere. You know, what's 0 0.0000056, you know, if it exists, let's just say, you know, for our thing, it'll be somewhere between, you know, leftmost left left most left bottom left being the 0, 0.0 and this one being 0. Point, um, uh, what's that one you know it'll be somewhere between there but it'll be approximated right that coordinate will be approximated and it actually all that will get lit up is zero in the bottom left corner right but if we had the space if we had you know a huge you know if we had a huge um, screen that can fit you know smaller numbers like for example, pixels are very small. You know, you can't even see them how small they are. You know, they'll they'll fall in those kind of ranges. Then, in that situation, for that frame buffer, yeah, you can fit that in. You know, you can find that precise pixel to light up. But sometimes even the values will be, you know, you might get four or five values from for one pixel, right? Yeah, and then those values might be interpolated um, linearly uh, for uh, for our what's it called uh, for our uh, frame buffer. So, you know, using this example here, if, for example, our vertice was something like, you know, let's just say, yeah, we had 0 0.0000456, and I had 0 0.0000345, and then 0 0.0000378, 0 0.0000, and all, using the barycentric method, this was actually resulted from some, some area, So what happens is now we have now new, new four positions, right? So then they get bin, uh, they get linearly interpolated or bilinearly interpolated. But what happens is if we have let's just say that they so our pixel is let's say our pixel is this is our pixel, right? You know, the beginning being here, end of it being here, or the starting of the next pixel being there, right? But these coordinates fall within say four positions within that well what happened is uh, OpenGL might do a bilinear interpolation to find the middle kind of between these four values let's just say these were these four values whether it's you know bilinear uh, interpolation you can look it up on Wikipedia if you want to see how exactly what the formula for that is it's, it's, it's similar to this what they do is they divide four four areas Whatever that value is, I don't know. That could be like that. That could be like that, etc. Whatever, and they get divided over the whole area of the pixel or the square that they're within, and then that's how they find out that kind of center area, the center pixel, and that sort of gets approximated for our frame buffer. So our frame buffer ends up having, um, you know, within it, for example, whatever the right position gets lit up. But let's just say we zoomed in. Let's say we zoomed in. And let's just say that this position here, right, was actually uh, one, and this position here, the beginning position was zero. So that we have between this area over here, we have what is it? Calculator, and then we have, for example, uh, one divided by 128. Yeah, so that we have each one of these uh, 
each one of these points along the uh, each pixel up between them two is going to be that much in value it's going to be moving that much in value yeah, it's going to be a multiplication of that so the first one is going to be 0 0.008 1 to 5 second one is going to be starting at times that by 2 uh, times 2 oops not that divided by 28 equals times 2 yeah, the next one's going to be starting there and the next one is going to be plus 1 divided by 128 etc you know so it, as it sort of goes closer to 1 that's how many sort of coordinates exist between it so that was zoomed in onto our pixel let's just say we zoomed in you know our screen so our pixels are be become far more blown up you know and we can see the positions between it then we can actually that's what's going on basically so OpenGL basically does that it, it, uh, it interpolates coordinates based on the vertices we have right and it finds out where exactly the frame buffer they fit obviously there's a limit you know to how how much can be put in there you know and that limit you know, that limit depends on actually you know how much a computer can store and most of the time a computer can store you know to a certain decimal point you know, that depends on you know how many uh, uh, how many bits it can process per memory cell so if it's a 64 bit um, if it's a 64 bit uh, uh, computer right, it means that each memory cell has 64 bits and then those 64 bit four bits will be, will be used to represent uh, you know, the numbers that can be represented you know within that within that memory cell or within that register or CPU um, uh, processor right, or if it's a 32 obviously it's even less but either way whether it's 32 or 64 bit that's the maximum numbers or the precision of the actual value we can we can hold the maximum value we can hold which will be obviously something like some point something around there or you can look it up exactly to find out what that that smallest value is but that's how basically it works and that's how it basically interpolates these values across so it, we will end up because after all pixel might be uh, bigger than the smallest number that can be represented by each, um, uh, each memory cell how much you can hold per you know, memory cell so in that case we'll have this uh, bilinear interpolation to get to center pixels because there's no point you know having this and that and that all pointing to the same to the same fragment or the same pixel you know, it's just going to pretty much find out the, the ones that are necessary so there isn't extra processing happening with the computer and that's it that's hopefully what i'm to enter this and hopefully makes sense to you